Hello, welcome to this session. My name is Mark, and I'm going to process an, a data set captured by the uh, DJI uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise. I'm going to process it in iTwin Capture Modeler. So, before we start, a little bit about iTwin Capture Modeler. When you install the software, you get three applications installed. There is a, a master module, we get an engine, and we get a, de a desktop viewer. And there's also, of course, a cloud view available. Uh, processing speed is heavily dependent on uh, hardware, of course. When we install iTunes Capture, we get a, a module iTunes Capture settings where you can see in the configuration what the speed of your graphic card is. So uh, roughly we do benchmark to around 224 byte graphic card. We also set a job queue directory, so normally that is set in, uh, in the user profile, but we can move it somewhere else. And the job queue directory is that you submit a job, whatever it is, an edit, simulation, or production of a mesh model, auto photo. These jobs go in this job queue, and then when a job comes available, another job is picking up. So that means that you don't have to wait when a job is finished, you can still put data to the job queue. And then we have a system information part uh, where you can see what CPU you're using, how much memory you have. Uh, about the data set, as captured by uh, Air Inspect, uh, I'm building in uh, near Port of Melbourne. And you see you have four folders with imagery, and you can get a little bit of idea how they captured it. And you will see more when we start with this project. So, first step is Oh, you start the engine. Uh -huh. I normally have the engine running all the time, so we just start it. It looks to the job queue, and it's, when a job comes available, we'll pick it up. So there's no job available at the moment. By creating a new project. So open the master. And over here in the, in the master, you see the recent open projects. You can see some information, training videos, and other information. And we can create a new project. So the project will be created in a folder. So I've got that folder already selected. So this is where my images are. And then I call, let's call it uh, board. And then create uh, three credits. So, empty project is created, and uh, we have some more settings. What we can do over here, you can do uh, yeah, some different type of options, but maybe we can go later through it. So, first thing what we're going to do is we create an empty block. And we work with blocks, so you create a block, and you import uh, data, you run an area triangulation, get a new block, and then from there you, you start it. Creating a new block can be, we call it new capture, or we can go here, select on the plus sign and create a new block. And block one is created, we can rename it if you want. It's not, not really necessary. Depends how you want to work. So you see over here, I select my block, I go to my photo tab and start import imagery. We can import a selection, so we can browse to a folder, select imagery. What you saw that, uh, there are different folders uh, created. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select Add Entire Directory. I select the directory images, and every subdirectory is now loaded. So what you see is 1800 imagery. This is how you can see what the camera is. Uh, we can adjust the GPS altitude. So if it's uh, a lapsoid, I'll select it over here. And the 3D view is now available because it's a geo-reference data set. So there are corners on the imagery, on the image GPS code, so that is what we used. So you see here the capture, quite challenging capture, and we'll see if it's going to work in one go. You see here there are some images a little bit low, and there is all uh, to do with the capture part of things. So normally I run one big area simulation first and I see if images are used and later if we can fix it or split up the blocks if it's needed. 
If I want to see where it is, I can go here to export block and I can select Google Earth KML. So if I now select the KML, that is normally stored directly in the folder on the project. And it starts up application that the extension is linked to. So in my case, it's Google Earth. So that's why good that started up so we can see if there are no issues. Now no, there won't be any issues, but sometimes we can import coordinates from the text file and then you can see some issues. Um, so here is the data I located. So let's just close it. So the first step I'm going to do is going to run an edit simulation. Uh, well, we have some extra settings for this. Or we can set, but it's not needed for a project like this. So the first step I do is edit translation. So I off select this and do right mouse, or I go here, submit edit translation, and then you select you want to run it on your engine. A new project is created, a new block is created, sorry. Um, so now this is about quality of the GPS. So I'm not really sure if the uh, RTK is used. If an RTK PPK is used, you use this option. If you don't know or if it's not in use, use uh, rigid registration. In this case, I use rigid registration. I'm going to compute all my uh, poses and type points yeah, because I don't know what the quality uh, of the GPS is. And for projects like this, I often do key point density high. So it's extract a little bit more key points from the imagery is easier for stitches to get So I do that. I just let the camera parameters uh, be calculated because I don't have a full good camera calibration. I don't have any targets placed. I do color correction of machine learning and I create splash. Now I submit and the job is now submitted to the job cube. And if the job queue is available, if an engine is available, it will pick it up. And so because I'm not running any other jobs at the moment, the engine picks it up directly. But sometimes, now in the meantime, I can do another job, something else, and then I can submit it also to the job queue. But then, of course, this job queue, this engine is now uh, busy. It will not uh, pick it up. So now it's a matter of wait till the area triangulation is finished, and then we can see if all images are stitched together, and if not, uh, we need to try to fix it. Okay, so the area triangulation is now finished. So what we see uh, right away a message from Hader Model GeoReference, so that's good. But 111 photos are not in use, so let's have a look why that is. So if I go to my 3D view, I can see, and uh, this is configurable how you set it up, but all green images, it, uh, all the images that are used, so that looks are all okay. But then over here, I see some images that are not in use, orange ones. So now, if you still want to use them, and of course we was, we need to find a way how to stitch them together. So different solutions for it. So if it's really not working together, what we can do, we can split it up into different blocks. Or first, what we can try is to create tie points. And then tie point is basically saying, hey, this point in this image belongs to that other point in the other image. So what, what's important with this tie point, if I create, you see over here a little bit, and I can turn that uh, layer off. I can turn this splash off so you can see it a bit better. This is a group of imagery, what is not in use. So we need to create, for example, a type point over here, a type point on this side, and maybe even at the bottom. So how are we going to do that? So I go to the survey tab, and we can create three type points. A name, you can I just leave it like this. We can, of course, rename it. So select type point number one. And what's, what we do, we're going to go in example we select the photo here and we need to create a point that you can see in the green one the one that's used and in the orange one so i go over here and select the photo over here see it's not really sharp so that means it's not in good go to my survey 
All I can do is I can now find a point that I can find that I can stitch to. So I select, for example, this point. So this is a pixel, and I do it in another one. So this is two photos that are, and maybe I can do another one over here. The photos that are not in use, same pixel. And now I need to find that same point in images that were in use. So I can do example if I click over this one, go to survey, and you see the lines are not really nice lining up, so that's already mean that georeferencing is a bit off, but of course they were not stitched together. So I do that in a couple of photos. So you can see now on the right side you see some blue ones and some green ones. And we can do that on a little bit different angles. Uh, and we can also go back a little bit more over here. If that will help to do it a little bit from different photos. If I now go to a user type on number two, I can find a point a little bit more on the right. So let's find, for example, something we can this corner. So I select this type point over here. Uh, so this the I don't know if you check this this panel. Let me go back to the first panel. And then also again I do that in photos from this side, the green one from that side. And then I'm gonna do the same for I do another point number three and a bit more at, at the bottom here somewhere just to make sure that we have enough points so we can see. And then let's do that on this image, one of those images. So I've got these three tie points now created, and now what we need to do is we need to run a new area triangulation. So I go to submit area triangulation, new block has created. I want to use all the photos, so also the photos that were not in use. Same georeferencing, and then what I did before, I did key point density high, so I do high again. I want to compute everything because I've got new imagery. For the rest, keep everything in the same. I submit them, but you will see that it will take some time to the engine picks up. It will skip these four first key point extraction steps because we already did this. So now, in a second, you will see it will jump. Quite quick. See extracting key points, that's what we already did. So it, it will go quickly through these steps and then it start uh, trying to stitch all this imagery together. Now the edit simulation is finished. You see, and now see all images are in use. You don't see that warning about that. If I go back to my 3D view, I can now see that all images are used and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a roughly check if it how is if if I see any misalignments but everything seems to be quite okay so if I'm happy with this result of my edit simulation what I can do now is I can start creating the mesh and this and how the farm must if needed so First step is what I'm gonna do is on this block I create a new reconstruction. I can do that over here or I can do right mouse new 3D reconstruction. And normally you see right away as a message, and that's quite obviously of course because of a large data set, 
is the last reconstruction and we need to set up a tiling. So often what I do is I walk from the left to the right. I go to spatial framework and what we can do first is we can create a kind of extent. So a region of interest what we want to process because you don't want to process data that's not for them. I can use it in this cornered system. I say edit. And if I want to draw a polygon, I can say polygon new. And I can do something like this. Uh, we can do something. I want to process. This is the area I want to process. And in here. Close it. And then um, because it's a real a large data set, you will see the expected RAM usage is 300 gigabytes. Now my machine is only 32, and one of the golden rules is like you do your tile size half of your available memory. So in my case, 16 gigabytes. Don't do it too high, even if you have more RAM available. So one of the settings I can do the tiling is adaptive tiling. So I can say each tile needs to be around 16 gigabytes RAM, and this is the amount of tiles that I created. You have to see in tau is the software that is processing tau by tau. Of course, at the end, we merge everything together, but it processes tau by tau. So that's what the job that go to the job queue. Um, so that's okay. So I set up the tiling, huh? adaptive tiling. I don't have constraints. I don't have any reference model yet. Let me see that later. And I keep everything standard. So when a reconstruction is set, now we can start producing the model. So I can say submit production, give it a name. Um, I can give it a name. So this is the output. So what, what do I want to create? I want to create a 3D mesh. I can select what mesh or output format I want to have. So I can do 3 mix, 3 SM, CSM, different uh, formats we can put. And what I normally do is I, because what, I, what we can also do some cleaning up if it's needed. So I do often a 3 mix first. I said, Quality of 90%. I don't do generate across tiles, it's not needed yet. This is the output coordinate system. So, this is Mercury Australia zone 55, so it's already selected here. If not, you can just search for it. So, for example, you can do oh, 7855, you can select it from here. Extends, I can select tiles that I want to process certain tiles, but I want to process everything. I do destination, and this is my output folder. So if I now submit, you'll see the software is um, picking up the engine. So the engine is picking up the job on after it's su submitted. So wait for it, and then call it. Uh, created it writes the tiling and then we'll pick it up and start processing. So, what I said before, tau by tau, but you don't have to wait for the full model is finished to see. Right? So, you see now that eh, production is submitted and is pending, so the engine is checking if it's available and start processing. So, now we have to wait till this is uh, finished, but like I said. But after the first tile, we can already do the model. Okay, so the mesh is now created. So you see, it took uh, 11 and a half hours on my laptop. If I compare 38 gigapixels and uh, 11 and a half hours, that's around uh, probably around 80, a little bit less than 80 gigapixels per day from a project like this, on the, but I can process on my laptop. So the model is finished now, we can view it in the desktop viewer. And then you can see 
let's make it a bit bigger so you can see the, the model is created and this is the quality which you can get from flying from distance like this with map3 enterprise and i can change a little bit the uh, display style but what you also see there's a little bit noise underneath and that's probably because i'm manual lining up and some noise on the side so we can do things we can just ignore it and, and leave it as it is but i can also just delete it and I just uh, delete it because it's the first thing what a client would do is, is we'll go underneath is asking what is this type of stuff. So now I'm going to delete there are two options. I can do it with an external application, but I can also do it inside I think Capture Modeler. I go to reconstruction and I go to reference model only. And now what I can do is I select tile that I want to edit. And there will be multiple tiles. And I just turn it upside down, it's a bit easier to find the things that I want to remove. So I see here some noise. So what I can do is I can select edit, select the tile. And it will be open in the 3D view. And this is the tile what I have selected now. And you see here there is some noise underneath that I first want to remove. On the right side, I can turn layers and uh, data on and off. So I said if I don't want to see the tiling boundaries, then I can turn it off to make it a little bit more visible. And then over here, we have selection methods to delete. So I can do things like a rectangle selection and press delete. Um, and let's do undo it. So undo is select none, control D. My is a shortcut. I like this option as a lasso selection where you just create a circle and the moment you let the mouse go here, it's selected everything and then you can delete. And then if you want to rotate, so you can do it all plus and rotate. So for this style, I, I'm happy with what happened here so i just go back and then i can save it i did not close holes or do something so i don't have to do anything with detection so i just say save and then normally i have, i will do all the tiles that i needed to be edited but for this movie what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go to my production and you see the production is completed but also you see some yellow Think uh, coming on tick where we need to submit an update. So now I can submit an update. The existing file get all written. So now the engine picks it up and start processing this tile. So it's only doing the tile, so it won't take that long. And then uh, and uh, it's not applying texture, so of course we should go reasonable quick. So we do this for all the tiles and normally you would do all the tiles and then you submit an update. We can also do it with an external application and uh, um, basically what we do then from each tile we create an OBJ file. You import it in a mesh editing software, edit it, write it back to OBJ and then we can import these OBJ files and then data get uh, Edit this base of that. So let's wait till this one is finished. Okay, so now I've got all these tiles updated. So I added most of them. So let me, when the model is finished, you can also click on here. You just go in a view and few of the changes are affected correctly. So you see over here, and then we can do more editing if needed. So we can try to play with close holes and, and move some more data, but I think in general it's okay. Um, so the next step is what we do, and you see over here, uh, you can do in settings, I created a three mix file, this coordinate system. Um, if you want to store it in a web, uh, web ready environment, you need another format. So often what I do is I do 
streaming first and then do all the editing and then I start creating other uh, file formats and okay, let's copy the names so I don't have to type it in so I submit a new production and I call it in this case a 2 and 3 SM file and 3 SM file is, a, is an, a scalable mix format so when you zoom in you see more data so you can do really large areas and it's one file and it mixes a lot of files with subdirectories and it can be a web ready scalable mesh so basically what we do over here we generate a cesium 3d tiles next to the system and that's the one we use in a web platform i do not generate lod across tiles and i do a 90 percent texture compression next I put this is the corner system but with this uh, map grid Australia so I still remember so five extend that to the whole data set and now I submit and because we already have this reference model built up it's just a matter of an, uh, another output format so you see you see less milestones it's just the LD generation and create a web ready scalable mesh export as an output um, because we work with job queue, so it's not doing this one. If you said I want from the same area, I want also have a cesium file. So basically, you do the same. Uh, and then I call it uh, cesium purpose. And then the mesh, and I select over here. These are all the output forms you can handle cesium. It's one of them might be cesium, generate a style. And cesium is always in this quarter system, just for EPS code 4978. Uh, extend this section. So you can do as many productions under the same reconstruction as needed. Advantage is it goes more quicker. If you do now a new reconstruction, what you also can do, it will already start reprocessing. Well, let's wait till this one is finished.